Good evening and welcome back to Tungsten Tales. Eight days down in Q School and we have two more new tour, tour card holders and plenty more players just pushing their way up the order of merit and almost confirmed their tour cards as well. No no much, no much, so much luck for Rim Van Barneveld. He didn't quite make it today but we will review his performance a little bit later on in this video but we will first of all get into the winner on the Euro Q School order of merit that started uh, 11 a.m. Uh, this morning UK time, around 12 p.m. in Germany, um, and your winner is Gert Nenches, um, a name that you'll be very familiar with if you've been watching PDC darts over the past few years. He's competed in the World Championship, of course, competed on the Pro Tour as well, uh, and a top play player on the Development Tour over the years. But uh, in recent times, in fact, just yesterday, he reached the final of the first stage, the first day, sorry, of stage two of Q School and was defeated by Gert De Vos in yesterday's final. But he is through and has a tour card. No more darts for Gert Nenches over the next couple of days. So quickly look at his results over the past few hours or so. Um, some good results early on. I mean. Patrick Bull and Franz Rush were very capable players on their days. Uh, and if you if you look at the top 64 all the way to the top 16, three last leg deciders over Franz Rush, Patrick Jingler and Mikael Unterbuchner. And I happened to watch that last leg against Mikael Unterbuchner and uh, with Unterbuchner averaging around 15 points less than Nenches, I'm sure, I can assure you he would not have been happy if he had lost that one. Um, then defeating Mikhail Schmeder, uh, and then the big game in the semi-finals against Raymond Van Barneveld, once again going to a last leg decider, and Nenches coming out on top against his Dutch compatriot, but plenty of promising signs for Van Barneveld from today. Um, and then the final, another 6-5 game, I mean, not the standard you would hope from Gert Nenches in that final, but nerves have to play a part. Um, the FSA probably threw by the order of merit in terms of the points he collated throughout the day. It was on 9 or 10 points at this stage. Um, but got the job done. I mean, Boris wasn't at his best either. 82.5 from Boris, 80.9 from Gert Nenches. And uh, he is whisked away from the order of merit and threw and has a tour card. No more darts for Gert Nenches over the next couple of days. Other notable names that are worth having a quick look at from today, uh, Nico Kurtz, no points again, no points collected from the first round of course in Q School this year, uh, he came through a last leg to start against Marco Obst uh, and then was defeated by Lukas Weinig, another fellow German in the second round, meaning no points from the opening two days for Nico Kurtz. Um, you've got to say, looking back at the averages from stage one, he wasn't on his usual game. From what we've seen on the TV tournaments in particular, he's very, very capable of those high 90s averages and, and possibly more, but hasn't hit those heights over the last few days and it's showing with uh, zero points from two days. He's going to need to pull out that best darts if he is to get a tour card. Veinig, on the other hand, is up to two points himself and in and around the pack that is chasing those order of merit spots. Rimbaum Barneveld um, also had a, another very good day, uh, collected a few points yesterday and plenty more on the card today as well. Um, that game against Luke Peters has to be a standout for anybody that followed along. He was 4-1 down in that game but reeled off five consecutive legs and came away with a 99 average in defeating Peters. Also defeated Moreno Blom, another top uh, prospect going forward in Q School and a a name that with a with a big run could put haul himself right into the uh, into the reckoning for a tour card. Uh, Gino Voss was defeated with a 95.6, and then losing out as mentioned to Gert Nenches. If we head over to the order of merit very quickly. Zoran Lurchback is topping that at the moment with Nenches obviously out of the equation, followed up by Rem van Barneveld and Martin Schindler. We had to touch on Martin Schindler very quickly actually. Uh, apologies for forgetting this, but Martin Schindler has the highest average we've ever seen in Q School that's ever been recorded anyway, and that is 123.5 against Stefan Niles in the second round, beating the previous record set by Dame, Damon Hetter 12 months ago, which is around 10 points below at 113. Back to the order of Mary, uh, Mary van den Bogard, not at his best today, but sticking around in the order of merit spots, as is Gino Voss after two 
fairly consistent performances. Just outside, Rusty Jake Rodriguez, he's had a good couple of days. Neil Zonneveld needs to get his act together. He's one of the top players here, but not, not in there at the moment. You look further down, Lucas Veining, Jose de Cicia, Tony Alcinas, even Matt Campbell on two points, one of the highly fancied names from the European Q School. So we'll now head over to the UK side of things, um, in Milton Keynes, of course. And your winner from today is Jason Heaver. Um, looking at the averages, I know going into that, that semi-final, he was on about 95, his tournament average, but the 98 and the 97.3 in the final means his, his average is going to be somewhere between 96, uh, possibly even even up to 97, probably, probably near 96. But... Um, a, a very good day at the office. He's been at the UK Open before. We've seen him on the Challenge Tour. He's a, a top, top player. And look at some of these averages. 100.1 to beat Gary Butcher. 100.8 to beat Martin Lukeman, who's one of the top players over the last few days. 98 to defeat Louis Williams. He was 4-0 up in that one, I believe, before Louis Williams came back and really gave him a game of it, pushing to that deciding leg and then defeating Alan Souter in the final. He's now handily placed after a good run yesterday in the order of merit. So Jason Heaver, joining your winner from yesterday, Kirk Shepard, along with the European players that have already made it through. Other names to quickly look at, I mean, Louis Williams is one, Lewis Williams, as he's officially known on Dark Connect, um, early on, defeating Fallon Sherrick in the opening round, a big scalp for young Louis Williams, and then John O'Shea in the second. Looking at another young lad, John Brown, he's had a good few days. 88 average for Brown, almost 90 for Louis Williams before. He was eventually defeated in that semi-final um, with Jason Heaver. But points on the board and that's that's all you need if you're not going to win these events. Uh, semi-final gets plenty on the board for Louis Williams. Uh, some of the names, more familiar names, the likes of Robert Thornton was knocked out in the opening round by Jamie Clark. We've already mentioned... Um, Fallon Sherrick, but if you look a little bit further down here, um, Andy Jenkins knocked out at that stage. Kevin McDinder, obviously a former PDC player as well. Gordon Mathers. Um, if we have a quick look at Daniel Bagish, knocked out in the opening round by Chaz Barstow, who's been a, another impressive name over the past week or so. Um, so they're your, they're your main players from, from the UK side of things. We'll quickly reflect on the order of merit before I leave you. Alan Suter topping that, um, just ahead of Martin Lukeman, who's had two very good runs in the first two days of stage two. Um, we've also got Jack Main, obviously made the final yesterday, defeated Scott Mitchell in his opening game of the 103 average. Scott Mitchell still stuck on zero points as it stands, but has more than enough experience and the game to come through and get, claim a card. If the game is there, I mean, the draw has been so harsh to so many players over the last couple of days. An easy draw wouldn't go amiss for Scotty Dog. We've also got Gavin Carlin after a good performance yesterday. John Worsley's right up there as well. Chaz Barstow, as previously mentioned. And a really good run today for Mike Warburton as well. A player that's played on the World Masters stage. A lot of stage experience in the BDO, but uh, obviously not played in the PDC system. Um the PDC Pro Tool system um, at all over his career but coming into form and playing some really good stuff just hanging on outside the likes of Andrew uh, Gilding, Martin Hennigan um, Jason Askew who was unlucky to be knocked out in the midway stage today Robert Thornton on two points as well um, Alan Norris yet to pick up a point he will, he will slide across your screen at some point soon even the likes of Scott Mitchell there you can see as well Adam Smith near another former TV player so many players I, I could pick out of there but uh, that's that's how it, how it looks at the moment with two days left um, lots of big players need some big performances to join the four that have already made it through to the Pro Tour and got their cards under their belts. Get DeVos, get Nenches, Jason Eva and of course Kirk Shepard. So we've got two more days of Q School. I'll be here as ever. Uh, you can head over to at Tunks and Tales to follow the live action. Also on Dark Connect and DartsRankings.com. We'll leave you with all of these tour card holders. We, we can't wait for four more to be crowned and then plenty more coming through the Order of Merit. We'll see you very, very soon.